Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Meg and we're tier ranking today. Whenever I'm on a time crunch for filming a video, like I am right now because it's 4.23 and I have 40 minutes left of sunlight, I get so tongue-tied. I'm literally addicted to watching tier ranking videos, but I've never made one myself. And I figured what better time to do it than when I want one video that documents all the books I read last year. And I really considered doing like a sit down and like talk through of all the books I read last year. But quite frankly, I'm incapable of shutting up. I'm like probably one of the most long winded people I know. And so that format would probably have ended up being like an hour long video. And that's just, that's just too much. 50 books is too many books to just sit down and chat about when it's coming from me. Like I'm just not capable of being succinct. It's not, it's not possible for me. So we're gonna do tier ranking and I'm really excited about it. So like I said, I read 50 books in 2023. To be honest, I was in and out of slumps like all year because I had a lot of reads that were like really not amazing, especially like in the beginning of the year. Towards the end of the year, I had some really good reads and obviously I sprinkled throughout, but I was definitely in and out of slumps because in terms of like me picking books that I thought I would like, I was doing a bad job. So I think now that I've had one really solid reading year, I have a lot more solid grasp of what I like. So I'm really hopeful for this year. Like I've already had a couple really good reads. So I'm really excited about that. But with that being said, I do have some, some mid books to talk about. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about my tiers. Okay, so first up we have the top tier which is new personality traits just dropped. Essentially these are the books that I am obsessed with. I love them so much. They became my personality around the time that I read them and honestly some of them still are. This year is my favorite books of the year, my favorite reads of the year, the ones I just love and would recommend a million times over. Tier two, we have solid book, fun, good time, almost great. Basically just like my, probably like four to four and a half stars where I really enjoyed them, I would recommend them, but they just didn't quite give me like, oh, I love this book, oh, this is a five star feelings. You know, like they were this close, but they weren't quite there. Um, Then we have personally didn't love, but would recommend. Probably more in like the middle of the road. And then we have incredibly mid, which are basically the books that I just wouldn't really recommend. They're just like the incredibly mid ones, like the ones that I just like never think about which goes hand in hand with the category right below it which is I forgot I read this and then bottom we just have not my cup of tea the books that I really didn't enjoy while I was reading don't think about at all or actively dislike and honestly some of them I probably should have DNF that's that's this tier so to be honest the middle tiers might be a little bit tricky for me because I am also an incredibly indecisive person so this is gonna be interesting so I read 50 books this year this is all of them for time's sake I'm just going to give you a really brief overview of like the context of them instead of like going into depth about like my thoughts and feelings and what they are. So hopefully that is good enough to get a, an understanding of why I'm ranking them the way that I am because that's the plan. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get started because I've already been talking for too long. So, okay, so first up we have Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman, which is like a rom-com. It's like a second chance, like celebrity journalist relationship. In a dream world, this is like a dream book for me. Like I typically would really enjoy a book with this premise, but to be honest, um, not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. It was really rough starting out the year with a book that I was like, huh? It was one of those things like I didn't hate it while I was reading it. Like I was kind of like bored with certain aspects of the story. But once I finished it, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, what? So not my cup of tea. I don't recommend her. The cover is so cute, but I'm, I'm never going to revisit it. It was just not, just not for me. Just not for me. Okay, next I read The Silent Patient. Oh, by the way, these are in order of when I read them. So second, I read The Silent Patient, which, which I guess I would put in the personally didn't love but would recommend category. I know that a lot of people love this book. It was like, okay to me. The plot twist did get me. Like I was kind of shocked and I had to go back and like check things like, cause I, wasn't expecting it at all. But overall, it wasn't like the most thrilling thing I've ever read. I can certainly understand why people love it. And I really feel like I would recommend it because I know that my taste is not everybody's taste, but just for me personally, it didn't It didn't really do it. That is not to say there's not a good book and it's not well written, just not, it's not for me. <laughs> okay, up next I read Circe. And then this is interesting, like going back and looking at the books you read at the beginning of the year and like thinking about how you rated them and then comparing that to like where you are now and how you would probably rate it now. So personally, like at the time, I think I gave it, I think all my Goodreads, I have it at like four stars. To be honest, it's somewhere in between incredibly mid and personally didn't love but would recommend. You know what? I guess I would probably do personally didn't love but would recommend because I can see again how people would like it and I do think it had its merits, but it was one of those things that I was kind of slogging through. It's like a Greek mythology retelling about Circe. It's the kind of story that I feel like when it hits, it hits and it just didn't 
hit for me. So I'm gonna put in personally didn't love, would recommend. Next we have The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I think I would put her in solid book. I had a good time with this one. I had never read a Lucy Foley book before and I really enjoyed like the ambiance. It's like a um, mystery thriller set on this like remote, I wanna say, I think it's like a remote Scottish island. There's like a wedding that's gonna take place. It's kind of like a whodunit. There's lots of characters. The twists were really good in my opinion, like from what I can remember. And I overall really enjoyed it. So I would say solid book, fun good time almost great okay next i read i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy which is her memoir about her relationship with her mom and i listened to this one on audiobook and i really really enjoyed it but this is one of those where like i feel weird i feel like i originally rated it and then i took it off because the more i thought about it the more i was like i don't know that i feel comfortable like rating people's memoirs because it's really just them telling their stories and it's not like my place to say whether or not i don't know it's just not something that i want to do to say like whether or not it was good but i personally really really enjoyed i'm glad my mom died i don't know that i would put it in new personality trait just dropped because it wasn't like I was obsessed with it but I think I would put it in solid book it was really 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 good like I really enjoyed it it's just like not one of those things like it's a very sad very open and honest and raw explanation of everything that she went through so like that's not the kind of thing that I'm gonna like become obsessed with that and like fix it on I really enjoyed it I'm really glad I read it I would definitely recommend it but I can't quite put it in the S tier because I feel like that just feels strange I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, next I read The Girl on the Train. Not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. I think I again listened to this on audiobook, which I've kind of learned my lesson about listening to certain like thrillers on audiobook because there's a couple on here where maybe I would have liked them more if I just read the actual physical book, but like this one specifically, it's like a mystery thriller and the one of the main aspects of it is like an, an unreliable narrator situation and I was so over the unreliable narrator situation by the end. Like she's constantly drunk, constantly complaining. It's very like I know in mystery thrillers a lot of times like there are not supposed to be characters that you like or root for because that's not the point of the story but this one I was like ready to like pull my hair out by the end. The only reason I finished it is because I was listening to it on audiobook and like I did want to know what happened but it was just not good. The cover is so pretty to me but it's just not worth it's just it was just not worth my time. Okay up next I actually read the Red Queen series and as you can see I kind of like interspersed some other books. If I'm being so honest so I decided to reread it because I read the Red Queen and I want to say like junior year of high school and I loved it like there's a plot twist in it that I did not see coming I was like really really obsessed with it you know I was blogging about it on tumblr just just overall loved it but I never continued the series and so revisiting it as an adult I was like wait what it's just like it, it wasn't all it cracked up to be in my memory I think the first book I would put in personally didn't love but would recommend and then honestly the rest of them Like this to be like, this was before, I didn't start my booktube until May of 2023. And so this was, I was reading this like right before I started. And so like, there's definitely a shift where I was reading more like booktube books after this. This one was just like more for me. So like, I didn't really understand the concept of like being able to stop the series that I wasn't enjoying. Like I wanted to know what the conclusion of it was. It was not worth it. I don't remember a single detail about any of the books. I wasn't a fan of the romance. Like the plot twist in the first one really got me and I still I still think that it's kind of like the blueprint for like a lot of things that came after, which is why I would still put the first book in personally didn't love but would recommend because I feel like if you're starting out with fantasy, you might still really enjoy the first book. Don't think the conclusion for the rest of the series is worth it. Honestly, I don't even know if I would recommend it, but I feel like I have to, I have for nostalgia's sake, I have to put it in a higher tier. The rest of them, not a single detail if you had asked me if I read this series this year I wouldn't have been able to tell you okay then next I read every summer after and I honestly do not know where to put this I like when I was reading it I think I had a really good time but something happens something happens in it that I'm just like not the biggest fan of so I think I'm gonna put it in personally didn't love but would recommend also the cover so pretty like so so pretty I wish the story was a little bit different the quick summer second chance romance I cried reading it like I had a good time then when I finished it I was kind of like I wish it had been slightly different, if you know what I mean. So that's all I really have to say about that. <laughs> okay, next I read The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina. And honestly, I haven't heard like almost anyone online talk about this book. It kind of came in, I feel like, under the radar. But I started reading it for something for work in the fall of 2022. And then I didn't ever finish it, but I would I found myself like coming back to it and thinking about it and like wanting to know how the story ended. So in the beginning of 2023, I decided to finish it because I had the copy on my phone. And I really, really loved it. I have never read anything like it. It's kind of like a historical, magical realism, family drama. And I really liked it. So honestly, I think I have to put it in solid book. I think like the fact that I split it up 
between the fall and then like late spring kind of affected like my overall like my my perception of it like as an overall story like as a whole complete work but when I think back on it like I still remember like the way I felt when I was reading it and I really really enjoyed it so honestly I really would recommend it if you like magical realism and you like like family stories I would definitely recommend it it's one that I would like to revisit and like read it all at once because I did not do that this time around so I would definitely I would definitely give it another shot and I definitely would recommend it and yeah <laughs> okay next I read The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley another mystery thriller um I think I would put this in personally didn't love it would recommend I definitely think the guest list is stronger I I think I would still recommend the Paris Apartment because like I enjoyed it while I was reading it but there's like like a lot of the plot twists I was like what's going on and the characters were, like weren't as compelling to me as the guest list I feel like overall the guest list is like the more solid work and the one that I would really recommend but if you're in the mood for a good mystery thriller the Paris Apartment is still it'll st it'll still do the trick okay next I read Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid unfortunately she she does have to go to the top she does have to go to the top I have never met a Taylor Jenkins read book I didn't love. Now, she says that only having read the famous four books. But I just, like, she just knows how to do it. She knows how to do it. She knows how to get me. I always love the characters and the stories. I think all of, like, her, like, all all four books in the famous four series are so unique, but they fit together so well. I haven't read um, Daisy Jones and the Six, but of the famous four books, which is Daisy Jones and the Six, Harry Soto is back, Malibu Rising, and Seven Husbands of Ellen Hugo, I think Malibu Rising would be third. Still, like, I ate it up. I read it so so fast the vibes were immaculate it was just so good it's basically about a family and each year they have like a big party they're kind of all semi-famous and they have a big party each year and the book kind of follows like hour by hour leading up to the party where each of them kind of has like secrets and things that are going to come to light at the party and there's like a whole bunch of characters and it's just really really good the vibes are incredible and that's all i really have to say about that okay next i read a flicker in the dark incredibly mid it's not that I like regretted reading it, but I just, I figured out the plot twist very early on. And that was like the whole thing. Like it wasn't like a kind of book where there's just like never ending twists. It was like, there was one twist. And since I kind of knew what it was, I knew where the story was going the whole time. And so I just didn't really have the best time. It was incredibly mid. <laughs> okay, next I read The Song of Achilles and I read this for a reading vlog. Actually, A Flicker in the Dark was in that same reading vlog. I was like doing the searching for a five star read reading vlog. This might make people upset and I said this at the time and this is another one of those where like when I reflect on the year and like how I rated certain books, like I think I would have rated, I would rate this differently now. I think she has to go to personally didn't love but would recommend. Song of Achilles is another like Greek mythology retelling. It's about Achilles and Patroclus and it has incredibly beautiful quotes. I was crying um, and it did really get me but it's not something that I think about that often. It's not something that's stuck with me long term. It's just like I finished it and I like, when I started it I wanted it to be the five star read because I'd heard nothing but incredible things and it just wasn't that. And I was still so early on in my booktube career that I like didn't want to come out and say that. But just for me personally, it didn't quite do it. So I think it's going to have to go in tier number three. Next up, we have Happy Place by Emily Henry, which if, if you've been on, if you've been online this year, you know. New personality trait. That this is my personality. Emily, like liking Emily Henry's books, like loving, loving Emily Henry's books is genuinely one of the pillars of my personality at this point. And Happy Place, like I recently heard, um, I think Haley Pham was talking about how like when a new Emily Henry book comes out or when she reads one for the first time, she kind of like backs out and like reads it all at once and then like can't remember anything about it moving forward. And that was kind of me I realized like toward the end of this year because I would constantly talk about Happy Place as like one of my favorite reads of the year, if not my favorite, because it was an immediate five stars. I cried, I laughed, I had such a good time. Which, by the way, if you don't know, it's a it's a rom com. All of Emily Henry's books are, and I started listening to the audiobook um, a couple days ago. It holds up. It holds up. It's so good. It's so good. Like I'm, I stopped listening to the audiobook so that I could pick up the physical copy and do a reread and annotate. So I'll be doing that sometime this month. It's just, it's just so good. Highly recommend. Okay, next I read The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James, which is actually the first horror book I've ever read. My friend Kat and I did a bookshop and swap video and she picked out the next two for me. And I was super intrigued by it. I think I would say, I think it would go somewhere between solid book and personally didn't love because like I had a good time while I was reading it and it definitely stands out in my mind because it's like the first like horror book that I ever read so it's not like something that is like completely left my frame of consciousness I do think about it from time to time I don't think that I can put it in either of the like love tiers I think I liked it like I think I would recommend this I think it was solid well then I guess I should put it in a solid book tier okay I'm putting it in solid book I had a good time I would recommend it if you want to try out horror with something that's not incredibly spooky but like is fun and fast-paced 
I would do Sundown Motel. I think I think I feel good about that. I'm literally so indecisive. I think I feel good about this. Okay. And then next I read Haven Point, which is a very like small, I think it was like an indie published book because it doesn't have like very many ratings at all on Goodreads. My friend Kat found it for me at um, Half Price Books. It's like a historical fiction set in Maine. It follows three generations of this one family that lives in Maine. It was good. Like I enjoyed the read, but I personally like didn't love it. Like it's not something that I think about and that has stayed with me long term. But I think if you're like a historical fiction girly and like a family drama girly, you would like it. Okay, then I read Lore by Alexandra Bracken, which is like a dystopian YA. Um, it's kind of like Greek mythology meets the Hunger Games and it's just a standalone fantasy. Um, incredibly mid. I wouldn't recommend it. I think I know what it wanted to be and I respect it for that. And I think if it had been what it wanted to be, it would be amazing, but it wasn't that. Okay, then next I read The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. I think I would say, I wish I had, I need like a category in between solid book and personally didn't love that's just like good. Like should I add a tier like for good but you're not missing anything if you skip it? Because I did enjoy it, but I just don't, I don't want to put it in the second tier. Oh, we're getting into tricky territory here because we're going to start getting into more books that I actually enjoyed and then I start getting picky about like where they go. Um, I think I would put it here. I did like it. I really, really liked it, but I didn't like love it. Um, I definitely wouldn't put it up in a higher tier with any of the books of this year that I like was obsessed with, but just a solid mystery. Um, it wasn't a thriller, it was just a solid mystery. The ending was sweet. There were characters that I actually cared about, which is always nice. But yeah, nothing crazy, nothing special. I would recommend it if you like a mystery, but like nothing crazy. Also, it's getting a little bit dark. So let me turn on a light. One second. Okay. Next up, we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, here's the thing. I was definitely in a slump at the time when I was reading this. It was like fine. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. Um, I think I'm going to put it in personally didn't love but would recommend. It was nothing crazy. It wasn't, it wasn't anything that like I like am going to base <laughs> my book taste on. Like it was so fine. I would recommend it if you like a like YA mystery crime story, but like it really just wasn't anything crazy, anything special for me personally. Okay, then Local Woman Missing, not my cup of tea. I It's so interesting because this is like a mystery thriller that's very highly rated, but just like something about it. Well, I listened to it on audiobook and I didn't really know anything about the premise before I started listening to it. And I just really didn't enjoy myself. It was, when it comes down to it, just not my cup of tea. But again, it's just one of those things where like, if it sounds good to you, give it a chance. I'm never gonna say that it's like not something that's worth your time. It just personally wasn't for me So okay, and then I read good girl bad blood which I enjoyed more than a good girl's guide for murder It's the second book in the series, but honestly like an, again, like it's nothing crazy Like it's nothing that I'm gonna sit here and be like you guys need to read it like, The way people like really hyped up this series before I started reading it Like I was anticipating like being obsessed with these books and they are just solidly okay to me Like they're not great, but they're not bad They're definitely like worth your time if it sounds like the kind of thing that you would like I just think it's not like taste defining for me so that's my take on that. Okay, and then I read Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which is in the same like famous four category of books, but it's about a tennis player that makes a comeback. Yeah. Um, I love this book. I love this book so much. I think about it all the time. I actually just recommended it to my mom because she was just visiting me and I think I'm gonna send her a copy of it. I loved it so much. I'm learning that I actually really enjoy sports fiction. Like that's new revelation for me. I'm really coming to terms with that right now because I am currently binging Friday Night Lights, which is something I never would have done in high school. I don't know. I just, Carrie Soto is back. I just, I really, really highly recommend it. Even if like tennis isn't your thing, even if sports fiction isn't your thing, like it's just so good. It's about family. It's about inventing yourself. It's about coming to terms with like aging and like your self-worth. And I love Carrie Soto, her character. She's incredible, so. That's that. <laughs> okay, then I read Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau, and that was a solid book. I'm putting her in solid book. Good time, almost great. She was fun. I had a great time. It's like a little, like, by a story about a girl that starts babysitting for a family that is, like, basically they're, like, hippies, and she has been, like, lived a very straight-laced life up to that point. And yeah, she just has, like, it has, like, a very strong found family element. It's, it has a very strong, like, coming-of-age element, and I love both of those things, and I had a really good time reading it. I know it's probably not everybody's cup of tea because it's a very, like, not simple book, but it's it definitely feels young because it's about a young girl. I think she's like 15 but I think it was very sweet it reminds me a lot of are you there god it's me Margaret which was like one of my favorite movies of last year so I don't know I really enjoyed it and I would definitely recommend it if it sounds like something that you would like okay then I read rock paper scissors again personally didn't love but would recommend this is like a mystery thriller that a lot of people 
love a lot of people love alice feeney's mystery thrillers rock paper scissors just personally like really didn't do it for me i think i want to give her other stuff a try because i've heard good things about like his and hers and stuff like that but personally i wasn't riveted the way people seem to be riveted and i was a little bit disappointing so it wasn't like mid to where i was like why did i read this it just was like not something that i really think about or reflect on or like whatever pick up again so, so i didn't love but would recommend okay then i read magnolia parks and i honestly this is like so interesting but i think i'm gonna put her in solid book like i was so scared when i picked up magnolia parks because i know it's a very divisive book basically it's a romance novel but it's about an incredibly toxic couple and like their lives in like the upper echelons of like london society so like the setting and like the concept are like really really fun it's basically like british gossip girl but like super toxic and i don't really like toxic relationships usually in books or movies or just media in general but i don't know i had a really good time while i was reading this i think it's one of those things like i didn't read it as a romance book because there was very few times that I was actively rooting for Magnolia and BJ but I like read it very quickly I had a great time and Jessa Hastings the author I think she's just a really good writer there were a lot of quotes in it that I think if I was even like a little bit more emotionally invested in the couple they would have ripped my heart out yeah I do want to continue the series I think there's a chance that I would like the Daisy Hates books better but I think it's a great start that I already like enjoyed Magnolia Parks enough to put her in the second tier so that's that one I read The Summer of Broken Rules which was fine I think I would do personally didn't love but would recommend it's like a little summer YA romance the main character's cousin is getting married there were just elements of the romance that just didn't resonate with me that I didn't love it felt a little bit insta lovey it felt a little bit like just it just wasn't for me yeah I think if that sounds like something you want it will probably hit the spot it just personally didn't like resonate with me so but um I think I would put her in incredibly mid I it's just like a cute little young adult like rom-com it was a published Wattpad book that I first read when I was in middle school and I really really like I was so excited to read it and just like support somebody that got published from Wattpad I think that's so cool um I don't think it's anything crazy enough to where like I would recommend it I think it is one of those things where like if that is your taste like if you love a cute little summer Wattpad book go read this it was it was exactly that it did what it wanted to do enjoyed it while I was reading it I think it was so cool seeing a book like that published but I don't think I can put it any higher than this tier <laughs> okay then I read Little Fires Everywhere solid book I thought it was so good. I've seen the show and I liked the show, but I wanted, I've always wanted to read the book because my friend Maddie has read the book. She's been telling me for a long time that the book was definitely better than the show. And I just really wanted to give it a try because I haven't read like a literary fiction, like family drama like that almost I think ever I really wanted to give it a try so I went ahead and did it I've had it on my shelf for literally forever and I really enjoyed it I think Celeste Ng is an incredible writer I was riveted even when it was just like chapters building the relationships like it definitely wasn't high stakes all throughout but I still really enjoyed it I think it was like a very powerful story so I'm really glad I got to it this year I'm glad I finally got it off my physical TBR because it's been there for a while so okay then I read The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes which this is my first series of hers that I've ever read and I had such a good time I had such a good time I think I said this when I was talking about them originally but I think like the main word I would use to describe the series is just fun like I think it's just such a good time at the time I was like really obsessed with them but like thinking back I don't necessarily think I can put them in new personality trait just dropped but I think I would put all three in like solid book I think it's just because actually maybe I would put the first one let me just drag them up here really quick I think I still have I think I have the inheritance games at five stars like that's how much of a good time I had when I read it but I don't necessarily know if I could put it in like new personality traits just drop I had like a really really good time though they're so fun I would highly recommend them if you like young adult like mystery riddle type situation all right I just had to close my blinds and now it's like now it's nighttime in here. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, what it boils down to is I had a great time. But I don't think that it's a series that I will ever find myself revisiting. And that that's what kind of that's what kind of stops me from wanting to put it in the top tier, because I think all of my top tier books are books that I would like I would a thousand percent reread and revisit forever. So I don't think I can quite put those up there, but they were so, 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 so much fun. Like I would highly recommend they're on the they're on the higher end of this tier. That's for sure. Then I read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. I love The Hunger Games. Um, and this is the prequel to that. Mm -hmm. I just, I just like, I, I had to slog through it. I was really not entertained. The story I think is just not for me. I think I just like from the get go didn't like really care about President Snow as like a character and it's like his origin story. I wanted to read the book before I saw the movie. I enjoyed the movie, but again, I don't know what it is, but something about this story just doesn't work for me. Like I enjoyed it in terms of like the performances. The story is just not it for me. I don't know what it is. I, I have tried so hard to figure it out and put my finger on it and I can't. So anyways, just not my cup of tea. I don't know why. And then I read 
the Dark Artifices series, which is um, one of the Shadowhunters series, and it's a trilogy. It's um, Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness. I think I would put all three in Solid Book because none of them were like none of them were like life changing in the the sense that like like I already kind of don't even really remember the plot. Like I remember the tropes and the characters and the relationships. I don't remember the plot. The previous series, like the Mortal Instruments series, which is like the main series, it's got quite a few books and then the Infernal Devices series is the second series in the Shadowhunters world and both of those are six star incredible series to me and this wasn't quite up there but I still had such a good time being back in the world I still think that the story was really good I think the characters were incredible but I think like maybe what it was is like the main romance in this series wasn't like wasn't quite giving me what I wanted like I wanted a little bit more and like like you definitely get the romance that you want out of the first two so I think that was a little bit of like the area that fell short for me with these three but I'm still really glad I read them because I've had them on my TBR for a bit now and I'm really excited to get to the next series this year which is The Last Hours. Okay then next I read The Seven Year Slip and new personality trait just dropped. This is so up my alley. I love a little romance with a little magical realism moment and that's exactly what this was. The Seven Year Slip is like a rom-com that is about a girl who moves into her late aunt's apartment and occasionally it slips back seven years in time. One day she walks into the apartment and she sees a guy that's existing seven years in the past. Just incredible. So good just one of those that like I think about sometimes and I'm like yeah like was it a perfect book no did I love it yes okay next I read what the wind knows um personally didn't love but would recommend it's a historical fiction romance very outlander coded and I think that having seen the outlander tv show I would definitely say outlander is probably a stronger story but it's just like a standalone historical romanticy romanticy no oh I guess kind of like a historical fiction romance with like a slight magical realism element because she time travels very similar to Outlander. The romance didn't like gut punch me the way I wanted it to. It was very sweet and very well written but it wasn't like it wasn't Outlander level. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But if you have the Outlander itch and you've read all those books and watched the show and you want something in that same vein I would recommend What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. Okay then I read The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston, which is the same author of The Seven Year Slip and I would say um solid book. Good time, almost great. Like it was the same kind of thing where it's like a rom-com with magical realism elements. Um, and this one was that she can see ghosts. And I think there were just certain elements of it that I wanted more from. I think the romance didn't hit like sucker punch me quite the same way that the seven year slip did. But I still had a great time with it and I would still recommend it if it sounds like something that you would like. She basically strikes up a romance with a ghost and she's a ghost writer, which is fun. I always love when there's something to do with books or authors or publishing or something. It was great, it was a fun time. I know it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but it was it was fun, it was cute. Okay, then I read Never Lie by Frieda McFadden for my book club. I think I would put it in solid book. It was a solid thriller, I binged it. I think there's definitely, like, is it the most groundbreaking thriller in the whole world? No. Was it a good time? Yes. Was I like flipping through the pages trying to figure out what happened? Yes. Yes, I was. I think I settled on like a lower rating when it all came down to it just because like the more I thought about it, the more I was like, this is nothing crazy. Like it's a very standard thriller, but like the twists were good. I was like eating it up and that was the first time that it happened to me with a thriller in a long time. Cause like previous thrillers that I'd read this year, I just personally didn't love or like were not my cup of tea. Oh so, yeah, I think it was one of the better ones that I read this year. So I'm excited to read more of Freedom McFadden in 2024. And then I read The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I think I would put it in mid. I, I like, I don't know. I think it could potentially go in personally didn't love but would recommend. But honestly, I don't know that I'd recommend it. It's not something that I, like I was super impressed by. Like I think I was impressed by like the craft of it because if you've never heard of it, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a fantasy mystery where this one guy is reliving the same day um, to try and figure out who murders this girl at the end of the day. It's super interesting. And like the way that the reveals happen throughout, like you like constantly like, wow, like, that's crazy. Like I would ne never would have put two and two together kind of thing. Like it's like a huge puzzle and that's like super impressive. I just didn't love it like I really didn't love it and I don't like I don't think I would recommend it like I don't think it's anything it just really didn't do it for me which makes me so sad because it's very highly rated and I've heard incredible things about it but just personally something about it I don't know it's gonna go in mid I think it could potentially go in personally didn't love but would recommend situationally but overall I think it's I think it's in the middle tier then I read The X Hex by Aaron Sterling which is just like a witchy little rom-com um 
I don't know that I would put it all the way up in solid book because like there's nothing special. I think I liked it. I didn't love it. So I think I would put it in personally didn't love but would recommend. I think it's cute for exactly what it wants to be. Like I, w I do want to read the second book in the interconnected standalone series. I think it's called The Kiss Curse. Like I think like it sounds cute and I think I would like it. But I think it's exactly the kind of book that you need just to read around Halloween and then you'll probably never really think about it after. And I read The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager and honestly it wasn't a five star read for me but I really think it could go in the top tier. It was honestly up there. Like I had such a good time reading it. It was the first mystery thriller that when I was reading it I was like this is what I want. This is what I want when I say I want to read a mystery thriller. This is the feelings I want to be getting. The twist in this came out of left field for me. I did not see it coming and I can totally understand why it's rated lower because I can see how the nature of this book would not be up everyone's alley but personally I ate it right up. I had a great time. I immediately put like a bunch of Riley Sager's books on my TBR because over like I just it's just so fun but I don't think I could put it in well maybe I could. Is this crazy? I think I have to put it up there. I just have to put it up there because it was the first time that I read a Riley Sager book and I kind of have to commemorate that you know what I mean like I think I have found a new author that I really truly enjoy his work and so I think this could be a new personality traits just dropped book so okay then I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab which is kind of like a it's like a historical romanticy this girl that makes a deal with the devil to like live forever but she doesn't know that one of the conditions of the deal is that nobody she meets will ever remember her and it is so so good I like I think I hindered myself a bit because it's one of those where like I put it off because I knew that I was probably gonna love it but I was scared that I wouldn't. I wanted it so badly to be like a five star six star read. Honestly on first read it wasn't that for me. I think I think I ended up settling on like a four and a half to like 4.75. It was amazing but I don't think it was like quite five stars. It's one of those things where I think if I reread it like now knowing exactly what it is I think it could become a five star read for me. It wasn't quite what I was expecting and so it wasn't quite five stars. However it was like very 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 close to five stars to the point where like I think about it. I want to reread it. I want to annotate because there are so many like beautiful quotes in it. It's such an interesting premise and I think I would get a lot out of it like reading it a second time now that I know exactly what it is and exactly what to expect. So I do think it has to go in the top tier. <laughs> I read The Secret History by Donna Tartt which is like a classic dark academia like thriller I would say and um she she's yeah she's top tier. I ate this up. I listened to it on audiobook with Donna Tartt narrating it just absolutely incredible. Just so, so good. I don't even know how to put into words like why I liked it so much because to be honest, I can 100% see how it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's a little bit slow. Not a lot happens. It feels a bit pretentious, but something about it just scratched an itch in my brain that I didn't even know was there. And I loved it to the point where like I want collector's editions of this book. I want to reread this book. Hear Donna Tartt's voice in my head sometimes. Like her voice, she literally sounds like a Charlie Brown character. It's just, it's, I could not imagine anybody else reading this story to me and me loving it as much as I did. Like she just was the per, like her narrating her own book. Perfect. Incredible. I love it. I love her so much. <laughs> okay, then I read One Day in December. Honestly, incredibly mid. It was like a little like basic rom-com. I had it on my shelf forever. My friend Kat lent it to me. She read it and thought I would like it and I did enjoy it. Um, I read it pretty quickly. One day at work when there was like nothing going on and it like did exactly what it wanted to do but it's not something I'm gonna think about moving forward probably. There were parts of it that I didn't love. Like the beginning of it was so iffy for me because the premise is this girl falls in love, love at first sight with this random guy she sees one day and then one year later Later, she officially meets him when she's introduced to him as her best friend's boyfriend. So you can see why there might be some things that happen in the first half of the book that are like so questionable and that like maybe made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Like to be honest, I almost DNF'd at about 25%, but I muscled through and I finished it and it was fun. Like it was cute. Like I was happy at the end of it, but I was still kind of like, huh? Like it was basically like a little bit more problematic Love Rosie. No, a lot more problematic Love Rosie if you've ever seen that. So like not something I would recommend, which is why it's not going in the tier above. Um, But I like don't regret reading it. Like it was fine. It was a fine time. And then I I read When in Rome by Sarah Adams, which honestly, it's either top tier or second tier. I really, really, really liked it. Like I ate it up. I was giggling. I was kicking my feet. I was having such a good time. I read it while I was home for the holidays and it was just like, it's so cute. It's a little rom-com set in a small town. Just 
like very wholesome, so sweet. The banter is so cute. Their relationship is so cute. I honestly think I could put it up there just because like, I think I will. I think I'm gonna put it in the top tier just because it was so cute. Was it five stars? No. Did I really, really enjoy myself? Yes. <laughs> and then lastly, I read Bear Town by Frederick Bachman, which I actually think also gonna have to go in the top tier, which feels a little bit crazy because while I was reading it, I was like, I could not figure out like how I felt about it for probably like the first half of it. It's so different than anything I've ever read. Kind of like a literary fiction, sports fiction, definitely more on the literary fiction side about this small town in the middle of nowhere in Sweden that is basically dwindling into nothing unless this hockey team of like young kids wins this like championship and then convinces like the city council to pour money back into the town but it's not really that like it's definitely more just about the townspeople themselves it's definitely the kind of book that like you were thinking while you were reading it like Frederick Bachman the way he handles characters incredible impeccable like there were so many characters in this book but he fleshed them out so well and I also when I was reading this I was like sick so I was kind of delirious honestly I filmed a reading vlog and I'm still working on it and it may or may not be out before or after this but I like, I'm not sure how I feel about it because I was so sick that like nothing I'm talking about like really makes sense but anyways I just was so impressed because I was kind of sick and like out of it I knew who everyone was I was following it so easily like I just was so so good and so easy to follow so well developed I felt like I was in the town like I felt like I was in the lives of these people because of the way that he wrote the story so and very clearly I could talk about this book for a long time so it deserves to be in the top tier okay I think that's it yes okay so that is all 50 books from 2023 ranked looking at the the books in my top tier like actually makes me so happy like I love all of the books that I'm looking at so much. I'm so, so glad that I got to them this year. I'm so glad that I've read them, that they exist in my brain, that I can now like revisit and annotate and reread them as many times as I want. Yeah, this was the first year that I really got back into reading. 50 books was a huge accomplishment for me because as I've said a bunch of times in the past, I was really just a big rereader and I never really branched out beyond like the handful of books that I'd read a million times. So this was the first year that I really pushed myself to try new authors and new genres and really just try things out of my comfort zone. And I had such a good time doing it. Thank you guys for coming along with me for the back half of the year and watching me go through this journey. I'm really excited for this next year. We'll see what it brings. I've already had a couple really great reads and I'm really excited to talk about them with you guys. So with that being said, I think that is it for today's video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.